Today we're going to be utilizing WinPE to capture an operating system and we're going to make this all happen using Windows 8 ADK. Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be using the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit or ADK for Windows 8 and we're going to be creating a bootable WinPE image with it. With that, we're going to capture an operating system and save it to a network share. Before we begin, you're going to need to download and install the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, and I've provided the link for that website below on the description box of this video. With the Windows 8 ADK, is basically an updated replacement for the Windows Automated Installation Kit, or WAIK, for Windows 7. What you'll see in this is that you'll have a new suite of tools and commands that you can use on this to make system imaging a bit more streamlined and easier to use. In this tutorial, we'll be covering some of the newer commands and procedures for using Windows ADK, as well as some others that you may be more familiar with. Windows 8 ADK can be used on Windows 7, Windows 8, or server boxes alike. So I wanted to show you a couple things that I have set up in my environment before we begin. First, I have a network share located on one of my servers. This is the place in which I plan to save my captured operating system image. Since I am working in a domain environment, I have also created a user account called Student. I have granted this account full control over this particular share. You can also grant access to a particular group as well. If you're at home and not working in a domain environment, that's okay as well. You can simply share a folder and then just use the local user account credentials in order to access it later. And before I begin, I'm going to demonstrate connectivity to my network share. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the search box within my start menu and I'm going to type in backslash backslash extra, which is, happens to be the name of the computer which the share is on backslash images1 and this is the share name of the folder that is on the server computer. I have also written down this network path because later on we'll be using it to map a network drive when we're in WinPE. Now let's begin the process. So what we're going to want to do is to first go to programs and open up all programs and go to Windows Kits Go to Windows ADK and then select the Deployment and Imaging Tools environment. Right click on it and say Run as Administrator. Now that the Deployment and Imaging Tools environment command prompt is open, we're going to need to create a WinPE image. WinPE is a pre installation environment which allows us to do many things. So, first we're going to type copy PE AMD64 and we're going to point to the directory which is c colon backslash winpe. Go ahead and press enter. As you can see it successfully copied all the files necessary over to our new directory. To verify you can go ahead and go to your C drive and you'll see the winpe folder is present. And within this folder you'll see three directories mount, media, and fw files. The media folder contains all of the necessary files that will create your winpe image. So I'll close this out for now and go back to our deployment and imaging tools environment. Now that we're back at the command prompt, we're going to compile a simple WinPE image. Now remember, the goal of this exercise is to capture the operating system of an OS. In this particular instance, we don't need to add any special features or packages to the image, so we're going to skip the mounting process and instead go straight to creating a bootable ISO image. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the command prompt make WinPE media space forward slash ISO space C colon backslash WinPE and just in case I'm going to encapsulate this with quotation marks space I'm going to add a new quotation mark C colon backslash WinPE backslash and now I'm going to create the name of my ISO image and I'm going to call it PE64.ISO. I'm going to close the quotations again. 
This command is similar to the OSCDIMG command that you used previously in Wake. The nice thing about this is you don't have to remember a bunch of switches, nor do you have to point to the etfsboot.com file. You simply do the forward slash ISO to create your bootable ISO image, and then simply point to the directory and name the ISO file accordingly. Now that I've got this command entered, I'm going to go ahead and press enter. As you can see, I've successfully created my bootable image. For now, I'm going to go ahead and close the deployment and imaging tools command prompt. I'm going to go over to my Hyper-V machine. Now, with that ISO made, you can either burn it onto a DVD, or if you wanted to, you could put it on a bootable USB drive. In this instance, I'm using a virtual machine to capture and apply images, so we're just going to leave it as a file. I'm going to go into my Windows 7 client machine. This is fully configured with the latest updates as well as it has custom programs installed, including the Firefox Internet Browser. You can customize this as much or as little as you want, but regardless, it's nice to have a reference machine to deploy images from. You can use the deployment and imaging tools environment to simply clone an operating system or hard drive and redeploy the operating system on the same machine, or, if you want, you can use this as a deployment where you can set up multiple client workstations. In this example, I want to use this reference machine to set up multiple client workstations. So what I need to do is I need to generalize Windows and run the sysprep program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go open up the computer and go into the C drive. I'm going to open up the Windows folder, and then I'm going to go to System32. And then within the System32 folder, I'm going to browse and look for the SysPrep folder. I'm going to open the SysPrep folder, right-click on SysPrep, and say Run as Administrator. Now that I have the SysPrep tool open, I'm going to enter the Out of Box Experience, or OOBE, and I'm going to click the Generalize box. What this will do is it'll generalize the operating system so that when it restarts, a new user account will be created, and more importantly, a new SID will be created for this particular machine. And under Shutdown Options, I'm going to select Shutdown instead of Reboot. Then I'm going to click OK. SysPrep is now working behind the scenes to generalize and prepare the operating system for redeployment. Now that the SysPrep plugin has completed its process, it automatically has shut down my machine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings of my virtual machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the boot order, and I'm going to move CD up to the top, and I'm going to point to a specific image file. The image file that I'm going to point to is the PE64, or WinPE image, that I created earlier. Now that that's set, I'm going to go ahead and restart my virtual machine. As you can see immediately on startup, it says press any key to boot from CD or DVD, so I do that to make sure that I boot from my WinPE image and not from my operating system. If you accidentally boot to your operating system, you're going to have to go back in and sysprep all over again. The first thing that we're going to do now that we're in our WinPE command prompt is we're going to need to give ourselves an IP address in order to access network resources. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a static IP address for this machine. So we're going to use the netsh command and type in netsh space int space ip space set space address space quotation marks local area connection and the quotation mark and space static, space, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an available address on my local area network, which in this case happens to be 192.168.221.13. Next, I'm going to do another space, then I'm going to add the subnet mask for my local network, which is 255.255.255.224. And then space, and now I'm going to set my default gateway, which is 192.168.221.1. Once I hit enter, even though it says element not found, you can go ahead and ignore that, because actually it did really work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my primary DNS server. Because I'm actually working in a domain environment, I'm going to need to access a network share that I've already pre-configured. 
In order to authenticate, I need to point to my local DNS server in order to be able to log into it with a domain account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in netsh space int space ip space set space dns space name space equals space quotation mark local area connection and quotation mark space source space equals space static space address or ADDR space equals space 192.168.221.4. This happens to be the local address of my DNS server and domain controller. Space validate space equals space no. Go ahead and press enter to run the command. Although it says the service has not been started, it will run anyways, and when the time comes, you will be able to authenticate using your domain account. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to map my network drive in order to have a location to save the captured operating system image to. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to map this share as a network drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in net space use space z colon which is going to be the drive letter that we're assigning it, space. And then the next item we're going to put in is we're going to put in the UNC share path of our share. So in my instance, the share is located on a machine called Extra, and the share name is called Images1. So I'm going to type in backslash backslash extra backslash Images1 space the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in the password for the user account that I would like to use in order to gain access to the share. In this case, it's going to be password in the form of capital P, lowercase a, dollar sign, dollar sign, lowercase w, zero, lowercase r, and lowercase d. And then I'm going to put another space and we're going to point to the user account. So we're going to do forward slash user colon what we're going to do is put the domain first. So in my case, I'm going to put rollingharrier.local backslash. And then we're going to point, put our user account, which is student. And then I'm going to hit enter. So as you can see, the command completed successfully. And now I have a network drive mapped to my WinPE boot image. And remember, WinPE operates in RAM. So none of this will be saved as soon as we turn it off or restart it. So it might be helpful to create scripts that run automatically in WinPE before you start it. I'm going to go through that in the next video, which is going to be part two, or deploying the operating system image onto a new hard drive. The next utility we're going to use is the disk part utility. This particular utility allows you to do a lot of things with hard drives, including formatting, creating partitions, and assigning drive letters. The first command that we're going to enter into disk part is we're going to type in list disk. As you can see, I just have one disk with 60 gigabytes of space in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in select disk 0. Now that disk 0 is the selected disk, I want to see the available partitions. So I'm going to type in list partition. Now, as you can see here, I have two partitions. I have partition 1, which is 350 megabytes in size. And then I have partition 2, which is 59 gigabytes in size. Now, what we're actually going to be capturing is just partition 2. So this is just the operating system and all the files that are inside of it. We're going to ignore partition 1 because all that is, is that's going to be your boot information. We can recreate that later on when we deploy it. So all we're going to do is simply capture partition 2. So in disk part, I'm going to type in select partition 2. Now that partition 2 is the selected partition, we need to give it a drive letter. In this case, I'm going to give it the drive letter S. So I'm going to type in assign space letter equals S. As you can see now, we've successfully assigned a drive letter to partition 2, which is now the letter S.
Now we've done all that we needed to do within disk part, so we're going to type exit in order to leave the disk part utility. Now that we're back at the command prompt within WinPE, we're going to go ahead and capture the image, and we're going to save it to our network share that we've assigned a drive letter to on our network. In previous versions of WinPE that you'd create with Wake, you would use the ImageX utility in order to capture and redeploy images. Since we're using the latest and greatest tools from Microsoft, Windows ADK, we're going to be using just the DISM command in order to capture and redeploy images. So first thing we're going to do to capture the image is we're going to type in DISM space forward slash capture dash image space forward slash image file colon and now we're going to put the location and file name for which we'd like to save our image file to, which is going to be the Z drive, which is our network share. And I'm going to call this captured image win7custom.wim. So I'm going to type in image file colon Z colon backslash win7custom.wim. Then space forward slash capture dir which is going to be the location of the directory or partition that we're capturing we're going to type in colon s colon backslash and then space forward slash name colon and then we're going to call it windows 7 custom and then encapsulate the name in quotation marks now we'll hit enter and as you can see it's now running through the process of capturing the image Depending on the systems that you're using, it's going to take some time. But for the sake of the video, I've sped the process up quite a bit. Now that we have successfully captured our image and saved it to our network share, we can go ahead and close and turn off our virtual machine. Just to make sure that the process completed successfully, we can go ahead and open the network share and double check to make sure that our image is saved to the directory we pointed it to. I'm going to open it up and as you can see, Here's the win7custom.wim file that we'd saved earlier. Now we've successfully captured the image of our reference operating system. In the next video, I'll show you how to deploy the image onto a new machine, as well as automate the process using some scripts. So stay tuned for part two in this series.